It is the 14th of September, and this day in Baptist history, our reading is One Faithful Wanderer. Our passage of scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. On June 10th, 1773, in Middlesex County, Virginia, Robert Thomas Daniel became the fifth son to Samuel and Eliza Thomas Daniel. The political intrigue of the day must have influenced every family in America, and it will be remembered that that was the year of the Boston Tea Party. Two years later, the Revolutionary War broke out in the American colonies. Soon after the Revolutionary War, the Daniel family immigrated to North Carolina and settled in Chatham County. It was there that Robert Daniel met Miss Pen Penelope Kane Flowers, and on March 1, 1796, the two were married. At that time, Mr. Daniel knew nothing of the grace of God, but his choice of a mate was providential. After Mr. Daniel's conversion and call to preach, Mrs. Daniel became an ideal partner and served with him in the gospel ministry until her death in Mississippi on January 1, 1840, but I am getting ahead of the story. Not only was there great political agitation throughout the colonies in those days, but the separate Baptists had experienced waves of spiritual revival throughout the South. At the outset of the 19th century, a renewal of the Great Awakening was experienced in the South, and in July of 1802, Robert Daniel was wonderfully saved. The 29-year-old convert was baptized by Elder Isaac Hicks of Holly Springs, North Carolina. The following April, Mr. Daniel was licensed to preach. Three months later, he was ordained to the gospel ministry. Though the man of God had a limited educational background, his extraordinary abilities provided an unusual ministerial success. Thus began a unique ministry that is difficult to analyze. To be sure, the separate Baptists were pioneering works in the westward frontier, and it was not unusual for men to remain for only limited periods of time in ministry at one place. But Reverend Robert Daniel and his wife seemed to be ever on the move. After short and prosperous pastorates in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia, Reverend Daniel moved to Tennessee and and itinerated for some time in the middle of that state. But a spirit of wanderlust soon found him in Holly Springs, Mississippi. He finally settled down in Salem, Mississippi, which he regarded at his home, as his home until the day of his death. Several reasons can be given for his unwillingness to locate permanently at one place for a lengthy period of ministry. His temperament was sanguine, and he was easily discouraged. Coupled with this trait, one must admit that the revival spirit had found a permanent dwelling place in Reverend Daniel's heart. When he did not sense the power of the Holy Spirit and results were not as abundant as he had anticipated, he was disheartened. It always seemed to him that just across the way there was a fruitful field of ministry that would produce a greater harvest for his Lord. Furthermore, he wearied at what he perceived to be a languishing spirit among his parishioners. Somehow he felt he was failing his congregation if he could not motivate them to the same height of excitement that he personally experienced in his desire to reach the lost. After 30 years of ministerial efforts, he wrote the following report in a personal letter. I quote, During the 30 years that have passed away since I commenced the work of the ministry, I have traveled for the purpose of preaching the gospel, about 60,000 miles, preached upwards of 5,000 sermons, and baptized more than 1,500 people. Of that number, many are now ministers of various grades, but 12 are men of distinguished talents and usefulness, and 10, most through my procurement, are regularly and thoroughly educated. I have nothing to boast, only in Christ Jesus my Lord. I regret much that I have done so little for his dear cause and been so cold-hearted and remiss of duty. Reverend Robert T. Daniels passed into the presence of the Lord at Paris, Tennessee on September 14, 1840. 
just months after the Lord had taken his wife. His last words were, and I quote, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, end of quote. His biography wrote these tributes, uh, words of tribute, and I quote, It has been the lot of but few men to serve this, his generation more acceptably or usefully than Elder R.T. Daniel. The bare mention of his name is sufficient to excite the liveliest emotions of hundreds who are still living, whose happiness it was to enjoy his pulpit ministrations and fireside conversations, end of quote. May men of God so live today as to receive such an approval. To God be the glory.